Hello students, in the last session we saw about what is cardiovascular disease and its risk factors. Today we will look into the diet in disease of cardiovascular system, the cardiotonic diet. To begin with, the role of diet is crucial in the development and prevention of cardiovascular diseases. Diet is one of the key things which is modifiable or controllable that has an immense impact on all other cardiovascular risk factors. Hence, it is the first line of treatment of patients with high blood cholesterol levels. The main objective of this module is to understand the diet for cardiovascular disease and acquire knowledge on dietary guidelines to be followed. The nutritional goals for a cardiac patient must be to attain ideal body weight and maintain it. The second, to reduce the amount of total fat, mainly the saturated fat in the diet. To replace saturated fat in the diet with unsaturated fats such as PUFA and MUFA. And to increase physical activity to alter cholesterol components in the blood. Let's see the principle of diet in cardiovascular disease. Normal carbohydrate, adequate protein and reduced fat about 20 to 30 percent of fat and protein of 12 to 20 percent and carbohydrate 50 to 70 percent. The fat component must be such that it contains one third to half of PUFA with omega 6 and omega 3 in the ratio of 4 to 10 is to 1. A third of monounsaturated fat and the remaining part may consist of saturated fat sources. Moving on to total calories, the total calorie intake must be allocated based on the body weight of the patient. Mild degree of weight loss for cardiac patient of normal weight is recommended. In case of obese patient, the calorie intake must be maintained between 1000 to 2000 kilocalories. With regard to carbohydrate, as the total calorie intake is limited, the intake of carbohydrate must also be limited and complex carbohydrate must replace simple carbohydrates. Increased consumption of carbohydrate may result in increased fasting triglyceride levels. Moving on to fat, it has been proved that there is a strong correlation between abnormal blood lipid profile and coronary heart disease, heart attack and coronary death. This in turn is related to the dietary intake. A diet high in saturated fats and trans fats leads to high levels of cholesterol and this may lead to atherosclerosis. Saturated fats are dominant in animal products whereas trans fats are oils which are mostly from vegetables that are hydrogenated to turn them into semi-hard fat. This is used in bakery products. Invisible fats that occur in foods such as milk, curd, nuts, oil seeds, eggs and meat are estimated to provide about one third or more of the total fat in the diet. The major principle of diet in cardiovascular disease is the restriction of fat to less than 20% of the total calories that is being consumed. Maintaining at 20% can be ideally tolerated without side effects but it is not advisable to restrict the fat completely out of the diet as this may lead to mental depression. The Indian Medical Council for Research suggests the proportion of polyunsaturated fats to saturated fat to be 0.8 to 1 ratio. Moving on to polyunsaturated fatty acid. The omega-3 PUFA which includes alpha-linolenic, eicosapentaenoic acid and docosahexanoic acid. The omega-6 PUFA includes linoleic acid and arachidonic acid. Foods rich in omega-3 PUFA, especially eicosapentaenoic acid and docosahexanoic acid, confer cardioprotective effects. Apart from improving the blood lipoprotein profiles, they reduce the incidence of sudden death, decrease the risk of arrhythmia, lower the plasma triglycerides and reduce the blood clotting incidence. Alpha-linoleic acid 
reduces risk of myocardial infarction and fatal ischemic heart disease mainly among women. The sources include fish which are a rich source of omega-3 fatty acids especially the fatty fish like salmon. Consumption of 100 to 200 gram of fish twice or thrice a week helps to prevent heart disease. The daily consumption of 10 to 15 grams of fish oil extract representing 3 to 5 gram of omega-3 fatty acid may be considered sufficient to control moderate hypertriglyceridemia. Vegetarian sources of omega-3 fatty acids are seen in mustard oil, canola oil, flaxseed oil, soybean oil and walnuts. Moderate levels of linolenic acids are present in groundnut and rice bran oil. The ratio between omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acid which is recommended by FAO is 4 is to 1 and WHO is 10 is to 1. Moving on to monounsaturated fatty acids which includes oleic acid and erucic acid. The sources include olive oil, canola oil, almond oil and groundnut oil. These lower the LDL without lowering the HDL cholesterol level and do not raise the triglyceride levels too. The major portion of MUFA in the diet may be conducive to thrombolysis and may be anti-inflammatory too. Uncontrolled peroxidation of PUFA in cell membrane may lead to cellular damage while maintenance of a balance with MUFA is conducive to maintain cell function. Restriction of saturated fats and trans fat with unlimited inclusion of PUFA and MUFA are preferred to protect cardiac health. Moving on to cholesterol, the cholesterol level in the diet should not exceed more than 300 mg. Liver produces as much as 2 grams of cholesterol in a day. The diet doesn't help much when the cholesterol level raises above 260 mg per deciliter. The animal foods are the main source of cholesterol and no plant source contains it. A vegetarian diet is suggested to maintain the serum cholesterol level at a normal range especially when planned with low calorie, low fat and high levels of fiber. Fiber plays an important role in the maintenance of blood cholesterol level by binding and excretion of cholesterol. Moving on to protein, vitamins and minerals. The intake of these nutrients may be maintained at normal levels. The plant sources for protein must be taken as animal sources may increase the deterioration of atherosclerotic patients. As there is restriction for fat consumption, especially from animal sources, it may result in the deficiency of fat soluble vitamin, mainly vitamin A. This can be rectified by providing vitamin A supplements. The large doses of niacin has been proved to be effective in treating dyslipidemia. Niacin increases the HDL cholesterol levels while lowering the LDL level and triglyceride and lipoprotein as well. The vitamin B6, B12 and folic acid supplements decrease the risk of heart disease that may occur as a result of homocysteine risk factor. Vitamin C is involved in the regulation of cholesterol metabolism as it converts cholesterol to cholic acid. It activates the adrenals and reduces the cholesterol. The vitamin C has antioxidant effect thereby preventing the tissue damage that lead to coronary heart disease and maintain the structure of blood vessels. Sodium is restricted in hypertensive patients. A restriction of 1600 to 2000 mg is suggested for patients with coronary heart disease. The level of restriction must be suggested after considering the condition of the patient. Cardiotonic diet planning. First, let us look into the food selection guide. The foods to be included liberally includes the green leafy vegetables, salads such as cucumber, radish, tomato, onion inclusive of all the vegetables, then all gourd varieties such as bitter gourds, snake gourds and others. And fruits and vegetables such as drumstick, pumpkin, lettuce finger could be included in large. Also buttermilk, spices, garlic etc. 
and the foods to be included as per prescription includes mainly the cereals such as rice, wheat, jowar, bajra etc. and also dals and legumes as well as milk without cream and lean meat, fish and egg white, vegetable oil, sugar, jaggery and salt. Foods to be avoided includes fatty foods, sweets, fried foods, nuts, salty sauces and oil dressings. Also, sodium rich foods like pickles, puppet, baked foods as well as soft drinks and alcoholic beverages. Moving on to cereal and their products. Cereals are the major source of carbohydrates. Hence, its intake must be limited and consumed in complex form in the form of whole cereal products and restrict the consumption of simple carbohydrates in the form of refined cereal products such as bread, uh, extruded products, naan and other rotis because it may cause weight gain. Dals and legumes. These are important source of protein as animal sources must be limited. They also contain B complex vitamins and iron too. Whole legumes provide additional fiber. Germination process is very suitable for legumes as it increases the vitamin C content. The serving size depends on the age of the individual. Both fresh and germinated beans will help control cholesterol. The dry ones can be soaked and germinated to add variety. The fiber helps to excrete cholesterol and to reduce its blood concentration. The soya bean have been proved to be beneficial in regulating the blood lipid profile. Consumption of 40 to 50 grams per day leads to a drop of 9% in total cholesterol and 13% reduction in LDL cholesterol in normal patients. Moving on to milk and its products, intake of whole milk must be limited especially the buffalo milk needs to be used after removing the fat layer after cooling. This can be replaced by toned milk, double toned milk, buttermilk and skimmed milk products. Butter and ghee must be restricted as it contains high levels of cholesterol and saturated fats. Moving on to non-vegetarian foods, restrict high fat protein sources like organ meat, duck, sausage, hot dog and egg yolk. Egg yolk is concentrated source of cholesterol which contains 275 milligrams and maximum of two whole eggs can be permitted in a week. The meat intake is suggested to be limited to one to two servings of lean cuts with all visible fats being removed. Fish with low fat and chicken wherein the skin removed may be used in these servings to control the fat intake. Moving on to vegetables and fruits. Vegetables and fruits are good source of minerals, vitamins and fiber. The number of servings suggested are 5 to 6 which since it is rich in beta carotene and vitamin C. Fruits and vegetables are the best dietary source of antioxidant too in the diet. The lycopene from tomato has been shown to be particularly effective at stopping LDL from oxidizing. Citrus fruits and apples contain soluble fiber in the form of pectin. Pectin can lower total and LDL cholesterol. The next is the sugar. Sugar and sugar products must be restricted as it elevates the calorie level. Moving on to fats and oils. Oils must be chosen by maintaining proper balance of PUFA, MUFA and saturated fat. Corn, cottonseed, sunflower, safflower and soybean oils contain high percentage of PUFA. Sesame, groundnut and olive oils are rich in MUFA. Moving on to functional foods. Functional foods reduce the risk of chronic diseases and has physiological benefits when eaten on a regular basis when in adequate amounts. Foods rich in antioxidants, hypocholesterolemic agent and phytochemicals protect from coronary heart disease. Antioxidants including vitamin C, E and beta carotene have potential benefits of reducing cardiovascular disease. Vitamin E maintains the integrity of all the membranes by preventing the oxidation of PUFA. It also 
reduces platelet aggregation and thrombus formation. The sources include dark green leafy vegetables, vegetable oils, nuts and whole grain cereals. Vitamin C, carotenoids and beta carotenes as antioxidants quench singlet oxygen and act directly on free radicals produced in lipid peroxidation which includes green leafy vegetables, yellow and orange colored vegetables. Selenium is essential for the production of glutathione peroxidase, the enzyme that catalyzes the breakdown of hyperperoxidase. The sources include seafood, kidney and liver, replacing polished rice with parboiled rice, wheat and finger millets. Soya proteins contain isoflavones, genistein, and diacin in higher concentration and reduces the plasma total cholesterol levels. The genistein blocks the action of platelet derived growth factor and other factors inhibiting the proliferation and migration of arterial smooth muscle cells and halting the transaction of fatty streaks to advanced lesions. Diazine slows the development and progression of atherosclerosis. Garlic contain compound called allicin, dialyl disulfide and allyl mercaptan are effective in blocking cholesterol biosynthesis. The high fiber diet including pectin may be in the apple gova reduces cholesterol and enhances the excretion of fecal steroids. Guar gum which has been extracted seeds of cluster beans has hypocholesterolemic effect. The high fiber diet reduces serum fibrinogen level which in turn lower the risk of blood clot formation and myocardial infarction. The spices namely curry leaves and turmeric have anti-lipidemic effects. They too reduce the blood cholesterol and triglyceride levels. Now, Let's look at the dietary guidelines for cardiac patients. The body weight of the cardiac patients must be maintained well below the standard weight and the calorie intake must be restricted accordingly. Mild and moderate physical activity must be maintained in balance with the calorie intake in order to maintain normal health. Moderate amount of salts can be consumed except in case of hypertensive patients. The diet must be rich in fiber by including raw salads, fruits, green leafy vegetables and whole grains. Constipation should be prevented as it may cause pressure on the heart muscles. High fluid intake is suggested. The whole grain cereals, fruits, vegetables rich in antioxidants such as carotenoids, vitamin E and C prevent the occurrence of cardiovascular diseases. The patients must avoid preserved food as they contain high levels of sugar or salt. Chocolates, cake, bakery products, carbonated beverages, artificial sweeteners, fried foods and ice creams must be avoided. Foods that have been hypocholesterolemic effects such as soybean, fenugreek, garlic, onion, flax seeds, oats and turmeric should be included adequately in the diet. Coffee and tea can be taken in moderation. Excess amount of caffeine increases the heart rate. Boiling, steaming, grilling and baking without fat are preferable methods of cooking. Fine servings of fruits and vegetables should be included in the diet not only to meet the nutritional requirements but also to meet the antioxidants and fiber. Heavy meals should be replaced by small and frequent meals. Eating out regularly must be avoided as it may increase the calorie as well as fat levels. Dietary and lifestyle modification with exercise and proper medication can reduce the risk of atherosclerosis. To summarize, in cardiovascular disease patient, the cardiotonic diet must include more of fiber rich foods and less of fat and fried foods and alcohol must be avoided, carbonated beverages are also avoided. 
the non vegetarian food items such as organ meat are limited replaced the saturated and trans fat with pufa and mufa and maintenance of moderate physical activity with regular exercise is also very important hope you understood well about the cardiotonic diet and let us meet in the next session thank you for listening